Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is stress analysis of surfaces and members in RFM6 and RSTAP9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I will be the moderator today. Uh, yeah, short introduction. I've been working for 12 years for the company Dlubai Software. I'm responsible for marketing and PR. Uh, yeah, for instance, the Luba website, uh, German and English webinars, customer projects, and so on. Yeah, I will also uh, answer your questions together with, with Frank, and, and Andreas Niemeyer will be the presenter today, but they can introduce themselves. Okay, my Andreas? name is Frank Vollstich. Um, I'm responsible for quality management and today I will answer your questions. Hi, I'm Andreas Niemeyer. Um, I'm working for at Blue Boy now up for up to 16 years now. I'm responsible here for the product engineering. I take care about all wishes, uh, about all wished features from you. And today I present this webinar. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. For those uh, people or attendees that uh, attend the webinar the first time, you can ask questions via the control panel. You can show or hide it with that arrow here and then enter a question here and Frank and me will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at global.com. Okay, that's all from my side. I hand over the screen to Andreas. Andreas, it's your turn. Okay, thank you Andreas. Then I overtake uh, with the topic stress analysis of surfaces and members in RFM6. And my example, what I want to present today, uh, I collected from various customer cases and today I want to show you how you can uh, model such a vessel standing on a steel rack. Um, with an opening, with a manhole opening and um, how to say unbolted head uh, closing on right and left side. For presenting this I defined four main points. What is important for me to show you, uh, I show you how this structure could be modeled and designed according stresses how you can do a strain check if you use a nonlinear material and how you can reduce your report, your documentation by using uh, member representatives and finally how you can set up a documentation for your clients. And now this is uh, the point where we can jump into the live demo. So what I change now to RFM6 um, and let's open a new model to define this vessel construction. Let's give here a name, for example, BU. Um, we use here a 3D environment and for this task, what we have to, to perform here, I define my tasks here um, a nonlinear material behavior to consider later a nonlinear material and I activate here for the design checks a stress drain analy analysis add-on. Further we have to define here in the settings uh, the upward uh, direction for the global c-axis. And now we can jump into the program and get an empty environment. Here you see our graphic environment on the left side the navigator, on the bottom the tables which output the input and result data. 
for starting modeling such a vessel, we have to think how we want to set it up. And I mentioned um, the comp this vessel should have a vaulted head on the right and left side, and this uh, structure. Maybe I, I jump back to my PowerPoint here. Um, basis on um, on uh, such a geometry, what uh, is uh, defined via the outer diameter, and here on radius one for the calot, and um, with radius two for the brim, and uh, this construction could be performed in RFM with arcs. So if you want to model such a type, you can place your grids and um, use here a line type arc. So um, for example, here we can create a new arc with nodes and you can pick such arcs into the program by giving three nodes or later a radius. But this is pretty exhausting for such a type or a construction because we have to find a, 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 a situation where both radius running in one point, so uh, between calot and brim. So I decided to show you today the construction of this vaulted head via a script. And for this, I added here in our script manager uh, below examples, a vaulted head uh, script tool, which allows us by double clicking, uh, run a few commands in the program behind. Uh, before these commands will run, um, the program asks me about outer diameter, the thickness of the vaulted head and the shape. I defined this tool with two options, with two shape options, one with torispherical head or uh, the second with a round head, the simple solution. And if I run this solution, you will see the program generates for you such a construction. Of course, uh, I just mentioned we have this more complex solution. I delete this uh, again and um, run this tool again and define directly my dimension. So in my case, I have a 2.3 meter radius, um, here 29 millimeter thickness, and I want this shape torispherical. And if I run this tool, we get here from our program this geometry with this two arcs, with this let's say defined radius is behind and um, I can use this structure now for further modeling. Now this is looking to you I, I suppose really like a black box and I don't want this therefore let's take a look behind this and I open this tool here and we see it's um, a simple let's say script file, we can open it with any editor and if we take a look in the content you see in the begin I have some variables so radiuses, this big one, this small one and so on, so material definition, thickness definitions and finally we come to the modeling where we can decide for shape one some actions or for shape two some actions. And if we take a closer look, what happens if we select, for example, shape one, the program is generating a few nodes, node one, three, four, five, six, then it generates an arc line between the nodes here between one and three, a second arc line between three and five, and finally it creates a surface around these arc lines. So it's no rock and science behind. Um, you see this small script is almost uh, 100 lines. Um, it could be done by yourself. I only want to give you these options and inspire you what you can do. And it's easy to create in RFM such small tools by yourself, not only geometries and also loads and loading and combination, whatever you want. You have contact to all options in the program and to generate such functions. And we use today's this vaulted head script. So 
now the most complex geometry is in the program and we have to combine it to create a vessel and for this I select uh, these uh, two surfaces and rotate it about uh, the y-axis so here rotate um, let's say minus 90 degree about y-axis and the rotation point is okay the origin now we can uh, move it maybe a little bit into the left side that the origin and the mirror point of the full structure is in the middle so I move this um, surfaces um, minus minus 1.710 meter so because uh, we have to define now more millimeter dimensions I change this unit to millimeters here and you see the program is recalculating this input directly to millimeters and after confirmation uh, this part is offset. Now we can take this part again and mirror it on the right side because it's similar so we use the mirror command about y C. so we create the copy mirror plane is YC and containing the origin and with confirmation you get now two parts so the two ends of this cylinder um, in the environment now we have to close it with the cylinder surface um, this is pretty easy we, we can connect this upper two nodes and we create two uh, parts for this cylinder so I select this line rotate it by doing a copy two times with 180 degrees about the y-axis and to get directly surfaces I use a step link functions and a step link function means that I can create between the origin element what I copy or rotate and the new target element a surface so I pick here this function where I say please create a surface in between and here I open the function uh, which surface properties this target surface should get I say okay stiffness type is fine but thickness should be not taken from the vaulted head then it should be taken uh, from a new setting and I define here a new thickness setting cylinder and uh, define here for example 26 millimeters now um, we have done all settings in this dialog and we confirm here that this rotation should create arc lines and this OK. Oops. Again, I missed something, I suppose. I'll rotate two times 180 x axis and now step links and template and now it should work yes so this is the job to get such a vessel from metal sheets in the program um, as next I would control the material here we get the standard material S235 in my case I have a stainless steel so I modify the thickness definitions of the surfaces what is similar to a cross section of a member I select both and go into the library select here stainless steel and search it with a key number for example here 1.4318 from this EN 188 with uh, this P solution and if we check the properties of this material we see okay we have here stiffness relevant data and we have here yield strength of 330 newton per square millimeters 
Now, after uh, using this setting in the dialogues, the program is assigning this steel to the surfaces. You see it by a, a, another color here. In the next part of this presentation, we have to take care or uh, to, to take care how people can maintain this vessel, how we can uh, come into this vessel and uh, we are forced to create a manhole in between. The manhole should be placed in the middle here and should have a elliptical shape. The elliptical shape is projected in the plane XC and uh, is cut through this curved surface here. And the question up here is how we can create such a opening in RFM. And here I want to show you two new commands. Um, so let's uh, make it visible. Let's use this wireframe model. Let's use this grid plane behind for this, for getting or defining a right size of this manhole by changing the grid distances. So I open the settings here and say, okay, the width of the manhole is um, 300 millimeters. So I use a half of it, 150. And the height of the manhole is 400 millimeters. So let's use a half of it, 200. Now we have points here which we can use for picking the geometry. The elliptical function is not uh, should not be constructed from straight lines and we support you here with some special line functions with elliptical functions where we can use for example this arc function and you see this elliptical arc is defined by three nodes or points p1 p2 and p3 so let's pick it on our prepared working plane um, p2 and finally the second node here in x direction and with confirmation we get a half of such a Ellipti elliptical shape. Now let's mirror this shape on the another side. So use a mirror command. Mirror plane is YC. A copy. Mirror point is the origin. So everything is fine and we get here this let's say elliptical shape for this manhole in the projection plane XC. Now we can use this geometry for cutting out the hole of the curved plane. But before I want to think about when we cut out the hole of this vessel, um, we have a hole here and it's pretty slender so we want to stiffen it um, so we we want to create a stiffener around the hole and the stiffener should have a high of 150 millimeters and a thickness of 20 millimeters so i use these two lines to create this stiffener first um, for this i copy these two lines one time in y direction with 150 millimeters with using step links by saying uh, uh, using a specific uh, thickness or surface property setting so I define here a new thickness setting manhole for example so uh, with the material of the stainless steel material and the thickness is as planned 20 millimeters now um, with confirmation, confirmation, we get now the stiffener of this manhole in projection. And now we can use this surface part, what is lying inside the vessel. If you use this transparent view, you see it's inside the vessel. We, we move it outside to the border of the vessel. For this, I use my working plane, create here a line from let's say the center of the elliptical shape to to my side here this line is now cutting the cylinder i use here the 
connect function to find the intersection point and you see the program is creating exactly on the intersection between surface and line a node. I can delete the rest and now let's move this stiffener from the center to this node. For this I define the center first between the first center and the second center, applying we get now a node here in the middle and now we can select both and draw this model to this intersection point what we prepared. And now this shape, let's check it here from this view, is exactly in the middle of this outer hull of this vessel. Of course if we check it now we see they don't know from each other. So I cannot look through. This means when I select only this part here, we will see, okay, it's not visible. Yeah. If to get the hole here inside, we select all three surface parts. Go into the properties here for surfaces and you see you get here a few new commands. And for this, because we expect the opening, we use divide by intersection and create opening. With using this command, you see, now we can look through and the program created us a three-dimensional opening on the hull of the cylinder and cut it this elliptical shape into several parts, which I can open and can assign new properties, thickness, mesh refinement, whatever. It's a, it got a new type trimmed. So it's a, a, a new surface what you can use for all other things. You can copy, drag, whatever, but it holds the shape from the intersection. What is a really powerful tool I would say. So this is um, the first part. Now um, we are finished with modeling the vessel, with having this manhole and we can finalize it now by creating this rack for this construction. The rack um, is finally here placed in this plane here and for this I use a rectangle surface, stiffness type without thickness, because I use it only to find the right geometry. I use my grid points and pick here a plane. Now if we watch this in isometric view, you see it's this is in the middle, so let's move it to right and left side. So let's um, use copy move command without copy and move this surface 1500 millimeters into the right side. Okay. And now we, we can copy this surface one time with minus 3000 millimeters into the left side. Now these two red planes are now the placeholder for our rack construction. Before we start with rack construction, we intersect these red planes with the cylinder by using our command divide by intersection. What happens? After intersection, the program don't create the opening because there could not, there is no opening. Yeah. I don't uh, uh, have a closed line circuit, but, but we get here surfaces intersected in an outer and let's say in an inner part. We can delete the inner parts and we can also delete the outer parts because we are only interested in the bottom line and in the intersection line. And this is now the basis for the rack. So 
um, we want to con connect here a channel section to the cylinder but before we go ahead with this channel section because here is the orientation of surface for the eccentricities is important we start orienting the eccentricities or uh, at the, or the directions of the surfaces um, for this I mesh the construction um, for testing and for getting a quick calculation at first with 50 millimeters for the final design check I would say we have to use a finer mesh but for setting up this model 50 millimeters is okay and we create the mesh All right, mesh and you see okay for the global structure the mesh looks fine um, even this uh, hole is considered but uh, we are interested in direction and orientation so we check it here with mesh um, axis uh, directions and you see now a forest of coordinate systems but um, we see generally all blue C axis are perpendicular to plane and showing outwards only the right side and even here they are wrong so let's hide it and rotate it and let's say here surface reverse axis system the same here for these two surfaces right click axis system and to finally later close the uh, vessel I apply here a rigid plane to close this vessel so um, I pick this line now now let's check it again with this axis system and you will see all axis systems now showing outside even for this manhole construction we we can see that even here the planes are showing out uh, the directions are showing outside so everything is fine and we can go ahead by assigning members to the structure so for this we select these two arc lines go into the properties edit lines and select here please assign a member the member is clear now we can uh, say which cross section the member should have here we um, use the library and select here channel section and for example here the channel u200 from S235 and we see okay y axis is running in right direction and we want to weld the back to the cylinder yeah so let's check this um, let's rotate it by 90 degrees and um, to have it eccentric because the program will place it always in the center we have to move it a little bit outside the cylinder so we use the eccentricity um, for the eccentricity we say please make it eccentric to the y-axis on the back wall so on this side and place it on the top on the outer side of the surface on a surface we select here this cylinder surface and say on the positive side so here now we define both settings on right and left side of member and with confirmation program wants to delete mesh and you see we have now here a little offset and if we check it in rendering you see now we have connected this uh, channel section to the cylinder on the outer side yeah? so far everything fine the next instance we, we have to connect this line with a member so I do almost the same but without eccentricity I write here minus 90 degree 
it's the same section and now we have also this bottom member. To get a good overview in the uh, wireframe model, I only can recommend because I, I don't like it to change continuously between these two views. I, I use here always these uh, member outlines and you see here exactly how the cross section is oriented. In the next we have uh, to connect the bottom member with the arc member. Um, for this I use also a member with a, a hollow section, rectangular hollow section. The size should be something with 180, maybe with 60 millimeters. And uh, you see when I type, use this keyword search, the programs give me all possible solutions with considering the filter here. And I select here this cross section. And finally, I can here connect the line. So I did something wrong. Let's move it here. Um, the same property. Okay. Now, yeah, I forgot something. So I can finalize this member here. But I want to connect now this node with the middle point of this arc, but I have no node, so we, I have to prepare it. So I select these three members, um, they divide member intermediate nodes with one center node without dividing it. So this is important for me that I get here a node and here a node, but it remains as one member. It's interesting for later design. And now we we can see if we uh, place these members, it's an easy game. So we can connect this node with this node, this node again with this center node, also here, and the last one here. So finally, it looks like this. And if we check this, let's say, orientation of the cross section, um, you see it's rotated wrong, so let's uh, open this um, cross section or select it by selecting this line. Um, right click, members, edit, section and rotate it, maybe by a quarter. And now if you use this view, you see so far it looking like expected. And we can use this REC construction by selecting maybe this S235. You use copy command, copy one time from this node to this node. Confirm and we get this REC on the another side. So far, quite easy. Um, the model itself is now finished and we can start defining boundary conditions. Boundary conditions are nodal supports and loads. So let's start at first with nodal supports. Uh, let's support this structure statically determined. So um, I use here type for nodes. And you see there are some predefined settings what are not fit because I think we cannot uh, estimate what you want to do, but uh, we can change it easily. So let's define the fixed point in the center here. And this point should be fixed in X, Y, Z, no rotation. Now the next two points should be this right and left point here. And here, let's say Y axis is free. The other tools are fixed and no rotation fixing. And next is the center node on the other side. So here we have a open direction in uh, Y and no rotation. And now we can finalize it by defining the two remaining nodes. And here we have no fixation in X and Y, only vertical with now rotation and the remaining setting we can delete. So you see with this table input it's quite comfortable to define such complex 
support conditions in a, in a few seconds. So use it for your advantage. No? So next point, um, we we can start modeling the load cases, and here I prepared to show you three load cases. For this, I open open uh, the table load cases and combinations. You see the program directly defined the surface load case because it's pretty common. And I would say, or I recommend always to run surface load case and if the surface load case is working, so here the program notifies one node is on the same, as we have two nodes on the same place, we can maybe here cancel the um, calculation and uh, open here a uh, model check function, identical node, and you see, okay, here we have identical nodes, we can unite it here, and now it should be fixed. And now let's run self-weight load case because it's one of the best plausibility checks. So if this load case is running, you know meshing is possible, you know uh, you have supported everything, and if the deflection is also in a range what is uh, expected, then you see also your loads are fine. But anyway, um, when you do some load case calculations, I recommend also to check some result plausibility. So for me, it's always important to check the sum of support forces. And you see, for the surf weight, we have only a vertical force in sum in loads and support forces are similar. So um, everything is looking fine so far. And to see about deflection is also fine. Um, it's going downwards and uh, for stresses to have a feeling if the sizes of cross sections and surface thickness is fine. We take a look on equivalent mesis stress of members. You see we have here about let's say 6.5 and for surfaces um, equivalent stress uh, mesis uh, you see for surfaces we have about 7. So everything in in the range, so I would check this load case and want to go to the next. The next load case is a uh, internal pressure load case. So we can uh, define here load case two with uh, internal pressure. Uh, I would say uh, let's use here the category permanent imposed. We have no if it defined here. And now we can uh, specify the internal pressure by a surface load. Um, we use here a force with uh, local direction in C, what is always perpendicular to the surface. And we know now the surface as the axis C is going outside. We checked it before, so uh, we can write the load positive and maybe we have to define 10 bar. Uh, but the unit here is something different. You can write the unit directly here and the program is recalculating it into this unit. So it's also an easy game for you if this unit inputs don't fit, write it in the unit you need it. And now selecting the surfaces and even here, let's say the outer ring and the uh, coverage in, in front. And this confirmation, you get now really uh, scaring uh, load symbol, but I would check it a little bit different. So if we run now the calculation of this load case, you will uh, realize that, um, let's say, um, the deflection is fine so far, the vessel is going bigger. And for the stresses, we have here uh, 40 for the members and 120 for the surfaces. When you see the red color here in the brim, what is obvious because it induces bending. And what is quite interesting, sum of loads is zero because we have only internal pressure. So there is no external force what, what is, should, should support this structure. So far the result is fine and uh, if you check distribution of loads you will see 
um, the uh, applied load here in perpendicular direction is homogeneous above the full surface. We have here this 10 bar, so everything is fine so far. Now let's uh, finalize the last load case. Um, here we define a filling load case. It's almost similar to the internal pressure um, where we um, can use the surface load. We only change here to linear in Z um, with a local load in local C and defining here the top point is zero and the bottom point is 23 kilonewton per square meter for this fluid what we simulate inside the vessel and the top point zero and bottom is defined by two nodes so for example top is here bottom is here now um, with um, defining the surfaces again It should work uh, and output would put us uh, respond uh, uh, corresponding forces. Um, you see here this is distribution of load. It's running from zero to um, to the biggest force here on the bottom. It's stress. It's stress newton per square millimeter. Yeah then um, we get only a weight in z directions 165 what is also obvious and for the surface result the member result you receive here 14 15 newton per square millimeters yes so now we have defined three load cases and you see every load case gives different stresses on members and surfaces and different stress components and you have the task to to check it and to check it you have to bring in a safety level so you you, you need some partial safety factors and here you can use uh, the combination you see uh, the program offers here a standard combination according to Eurocode or any, any other standards and if you say okay this uh, scheme is not okay for me um, I uh, recommend to use this combination without maybe without or to use it without then you can uh, define uh, combinations by yourself so with surf weight uh, with surf weight and internal pressure and so on like you wish no? or you use a automatism behind what means you activate this combination result and um, define your design situations what is interesting for the final check um, we say we want to check only ultimate limit state for example for the stress analysis and that the program knows what should be combined you have here a wizard setting and the wizard setting is um, here what allows us to use here user-defined combinations and if you check this you are forced to de define action combinations and here you can say first action is for example only permanent the section as uh, this second uh, action is permanent and permanent in post and by using these two settings the program is creating from your load cases automatically combined system where it checks maybe self weight self weight internal pressure with filling only filling if you say now oh i need safety factors no worry you can change here to 1.35 or whatever which factor you need and here to 35 and here for example to 1.5 and if you check it you get these factors inside your combination product so it's easy you see now it's according second order if this is not wished give this wizard the setting please do it according linear theory and the program is updating it to linear theory so this is a pretty good tool to create the combinations and these combinations will be used now in the 
stress analysis because we have here design situations is design situation one what is connected to this where this check is given so if you remove this check apply you see it will be removed if you check it apply it will be checked no? and if we run the, the stress check you will see the program is calculating the internal forces for co1 to 4 and feeding all stresses into the stress add-on and what happens now now we get a colorful picture what is nice but let's check results in detail and you see you have now here stress analysis behind this is static what we just checked and you get now here some stresses for members you see here positive negative stresses for sigma x shear stresses or maybe equivalent stress and then it compares these components to the limit stress by a ratio the same for the surfaces sigma 1 2 on positive side negative side equivalent stress and compare it to a ratio so ratios may be up to uh, existing compared to the allowed stress the question is now which stress component i should compare and now let's start with members if you check the stress strain input you will see we have here our member uh, member configurations and you see the, the program shows us an endless table of stress components what you can calculate only normal access force compression force tension force whatever as engineer or as designer i'm interested now in Mises equivalent stress and in the second column the program asked me what is my limit stress you can select here no limit stress normal stress shear stress equivalent stress or a user defined it depends let's use now a user defined to show you the the, the, the options what the program have i use for example here 85 percent of the yield limit stress so 280 for example and the same could be done for surfaces it's almost similar so if we open this setting you see the same only for surfaces let's check here also only Mises stress with a user defined stress to be similar to 80 and if we run now stress strain analysis again you see no internal forces have to be calculated because they are already here and now this tree is smaller we only calculate equivalent Mises stress it's now 64 the biggest one of CO1 to 4 and the biggest stress compared to the limit stress 280 is maybe uh, results to um, in the members to 23 percent in the surface to 66 percent yeah? so far yeah? now um, we come up and say is this the limit of the program stress strain analysis do we have more options and i would say you have no option to design members surfaces of course also solids but in, if I watch this model, I would say line welds would be also interesting. So I can also define a line weld here. If I jump back to my basic input and assign on the line here a line weld joint. For example, uh, yeah, but joint with a thickness of 26 millimeters of the cylinder for example and uh, we specify also the same here which stresses we want to check we say okay let's give us the principal force directions but output finally an interacted stress maybe sigma w e d and compare it again that we have a comparison to 280 yeah? This you have to detect it from you, this limit stress of weld, of course. 
and uh, here you can specify if it should use a smooth or not smooth solution. I would say at the moment for showing you the result we use no smoothing and um, now we say we have one line weld for example here in the top we weld uh, this surface to this surface and um, on the bottom the same so on this line this surface to this surface yeah now stress drain results will be deleted you see we have now line welded joints here and if we recheck it we get member results, surface results and line weld results where we see deactivate the rest, deactivate only line welds without mesh. Um, you see now we have only stresses, we have more elements and ratios only a few because we defined only for one component a limit stress. Let's check. We have here normal stress, what is maybe the tension between the surface. We have a really huge stress, maybe 70. Bending is almost zero in the middle, what is clear, but only on the end we have some bending because here is the brim. Um, surface shear is almost zero, longitudinal shear is also almost zero, and the interaction represents the normal stress part in this case. And if we compare it to the limit stress, we get here utilization of 26%, for example. All this stuff, what we have now, members, surfaces, wells, are also in the tables. We have here stresses on members, existing, limit, result, stresses on surface, existing, limit, result, and line welds. But here we selected a few more, so you get no limits and only the existing one and this final one he check against limit stress. This could this is sorted by design situation, by loading, by line. So by line we have two elements, so you get two fractures. Yeah? <laughs> so now I want to open the question why is this program stress drain analysis or why is the program stress drain analysis mentions the word strain? At the moment we take care about only about stresses. And the answer is um, it checks also strains. We only have to activate it. So if we open the global program setting and activate the strain analysis, you will see that you get in the surface properties what we just defined only for Mises stress for example also a new chapter strains. It's looking similar like, like the stress table but it's strains and we can select here for example the Mises strain also strain vectors in Mises law uh, uh, written and we have also here a limit plastic strain of 50 promil. What happens if we activate this? Let's run analysis. And we see after calculation that we get no further arm here. So surfaces, oh surfaces gets now additionally here a strain result. We see max Mises strain is 0 0.9 promil of all four load cases of course. The red part is near the brim because it induces bending of course also but what is with this let's say uh, limit strain of 50 Promil, what is defined. There is no check and even if I open the table uh, strains on surfaces we have only existing strain. Maybe because we have no the biggest stress is here 183 it's not reaching the yield stress so let's inducing or increasing the pressure load to get an effect. 
I open internal pressure and change it to, oops, uh, 25 bar. And let's run it again. So um, let's use the stress strain analysis and run it again with a load which uh, reaches the yield stress, yield strengths. Maybe then the program is comparing or checking the plastic strains. But what happens? We have now a, a stress of which is bigger than the yield strengths. The strain is also bigger, 2.3 per mil, but but we have no check against the the plastic strain. This 50 per uh, mil is still not checked, and this is only checked if the program knows what is a plastic strain. So we have to learn the program what is elastic and plastic. And for this, you have to go back to the basic input, to the basic objects, to materials and say, okay, please use for the stainless steel here another material law. It's common, you can use it for every material and use here isotropic nonlinear elastic. What happens? Now with this setting, the program learns, oh, I have an elastic part and a plastic or nonlinear elastic part. Here is my yield strength. To be comparable, let's use here as yield strength not 330 and 280. And um, let's see what happens. So if I run now stress strain again, the program recalculates CO1 to 4 because we have now new material properties, so we need new internal forces. So it should be detected now linear elastic, of course. And so two are already, and the last two follows, and now the stress check will be done, stress and strain check. And you see now suddenly we get additionally to the strains. Now we get a bigger strain, a plastic strain part of 1.8 and the ratio of maybe 4%. The stress is now not higher than uh, this limit, uh, this yield strength. We just we defined 280. So at 280, the material begins to yield. And the stress is not going bigger, but we get additional strain. So therefore we have now here bigger final strain and we get some plastic strains here, especially in the brim. So um, this was my target to show you that you can design with this add-on not only stresses, then also strains. And this depends on the material law, what you assign. Now, when the program don't know plastic strains, you cannot design it. Now, we come to our next point to the um, representatives. So we just designed members, surfaces, line welds. So if we go back to our members, you see these two regs are almost similar. So if you know the biggest stress, you know exactly that the first is have the same as design like the another one. But let's pick out one member what is similar. For example, this bottom member. And if we watch here the results, you see the utilization here is 11%, here 7%. But for us means this, I have to control two members. So if I say, say take a look here, stresses on members by member, I have here two members. Or if I activate all, I have 18 members. So 18 lines and 18 lines and have some effect on the documentation later. So to reduce documentation, we invented the system of representatives. You can activate these representatives in the base data below settings and options. You have here members and representatives and um, after activation you will receive here below basic objects a new arm, 
member representatives, five elements. What means this? You get now here such colored bubbles and if you select one you see, oh, the ARC member both are selected. Here the bottom member both are selected. Here the outer members are selected. So the program finds similarities and catch it up. So for example for the second we, he, he sees, okay, this member 3 and 12 have the same properties, so I, I can present it to you as one element. And this means we can use these five settings for documenting these 18 members. And we prepared also our stress strain analysis for this. So if I go here to, let's say, you see, we have now here member representatives, and if we calculate all the member representatives. Um, the program designs directly not only members and also member representatives. And to see the difference is now following. If I select now again this bottom member, where we realized we have here 11% utilization and here 7. If we do the same for representatives, you see we have for both the utilization of 11. So the program tries to find similarities and to document it also with this. So it finds the most crucial element or loading for this element and gives us the result for both at the same time. This means finally, when I go to stresses on representatives, I have now instead of 18 lines, only five lines to document the most crucial result. Yeah. And because I just mentioned so often documentation, now let's set up in the last point the documentation. And the documentation is also defined in our program here on the, let's say, bottom point. So we did modeling, we did loading, we did results, and now let's print results in a printout report. For this, I create a new printout report. And you see the same navigator like we have here is mentioned in the printout report. You can document model data, you can document basic objects, type for objects, you can document part lists if you need it, if you don't need it, deactivate it, you can document static results, summary, nodal support forces, whatever. So if uh, you have here this nodal support forces, um, you have also some more options to, to specify which data should be documented. Uh, this means here at the moment the program shows you all the data how you present it in the main program behind, so in these tables. If you want to have an, another scheme, you can select this property and deactivate this and say, for example, um, loading, I want to see this result only for these four results and display uh, in the rows, I want to see only values, no extremes and whatever and in the columns only forces, no bending moments because they are not interesting for example. This you can do with all elements of cprint.report. report. Further, for the stress check, you see uh, you have here member configuration surface, solid we can deactivate because we have no solids and line welded. And here you can also document some tables, let's reduce it a little bit, so no warning and errors, uh, stresses on members we don't want, we want to document representatives and here let's use uh, maybe stresses on member representatives by member representatives. Um, for surfaces we use for stresses surfaces by surface, uh, for line weights by line, for strain on surfaces by surface and I think this is now everything and we want to see an overview for example. Now if we open this document 
and you will uh, get now a nice styled document for your clients. You see, you get here a temple preview with a picture where you can define your client, create it by project name, a content, make it a little bit bigger, some description of geometry, which cross sections you used, which surfaces, which lines, and so on. So all the inputted data is defined here, surfaces, rotated, trimmed, plane, whatever. And finally, you can also jump to results. You see static results. We have this summary and support forces where we defined only locus uh, CO1 to CO4 for forces. So you can have a control on rows and columns in this selector before. And for the stress uh, results, you see also here you get uh, utilizations by representatives. You get utilizations by surfaces. You get uh, results for the line wells, and you get here this strain check. Yeah, and finally the program sums up everything from all add-ons, not only from stress strains and also from steel design and timber in one overview table. And you see here all governing design checks summed up. So, but. This is pure table boring stuff and to give them some life you can print in some pictures and uh, this is meant uh, that you say okay uh, let's document all my designed elements so uh, for example the uh, representatives for one rack so let's uh, view it here in this direction by members without diagrams and let's print here a numbering of representatives and you can print this picture now into the report by using here window field and OK. For the surfaces, right, let's say now go back to uh, surfaces. Here we have stresses. We start from stresses. You have here the structure. And maybe you can use here your selection according thicknesses, vaulted head like we started. Uh, you can bring in here the maximum and minimum stress by values on surfaces, extremes. And let's print here maybe the stress plot what is uh, on the yield strength. So we can print this stress here. Um, okay, then because it's on yield stress, we print also the strains, the final strains. Okay, and uh, the plastic strain ratio. Okay, and for the let's say a cylinder it's a little bit different we have no no yield strength so we go back to stresses and you see okay everything is fine so we need only stresses and utilization and here we can also print a picture um, and we use here because it's more complex a 3d picture so um, okay and sum up this with a stress utilization and go. So you can go ahead like this. Um, you can print much more pictures, but I think for presenting it's fine. What I want to show you now, um, you have now these pictures inside. You see you have here such different symbols. These are these red ones are 3D pictures. Um, the others are regular pictures, um, maybe in full scale. So uh, you can spice it up with this picture, but this 3D option is not interesting here in these structures and more if you export this data into a PDF. So if we uh, export it on PDF, maybe we see letter P, um, we, we can create uh, directly a PDF for this at first looking similar like this data in the main program. But um, if you scroll down to these pictures, what have this 3D option, and if you trust here, you give your client the option not to watch only this data 
then you can directly um, look inside. Yeah? So this is a really powerful tool. So you can give your clients more options, more results. And uh, what is, uh, I think, uh, good for the full project. Yeah? So now this is the export of the uh, result data from our program into PDF. But we just, uh, uh, or a few months ago, we invented also here an HTML export. What is uh, here to create the HTML from the report? Um, we can make also here the letter P now. Um, and producing a full package to create um, the, the protocol like a website. So you have now here the Google Chrome browser where you see uh, the data uh, a little different like in the main program because we have only the properties of an HTML but you get all data written down with pictures and so on and if we um, check this on our desktop um, we get here a folder um, desktop um, where we have here a folder P where the program stores all data, so all pictures and result data. So this HTML is connected to this folder. And the interesting fact is now not that you can create a website from your reports and that you can use this stuff in Word or in Excel because they can also read in HTML data. So you can here read uh, the data here from, um, where is it, desktop uh, P, open, and you get this data also in Excel or Word and with all links, with all data, um, and with all figures. So the only case what happens if you read it in directly is that the program cannot notify or change between a point and comma as decimal uh, the, uh, sign. So uh, for this, I only can say, please import it with the option uh, advanced here and say decimal uh, sign is a point. And um, with using this setting, you can open this P document again and you will receive here all figures like expected. You get it directly in a table uh, for further usage. Uh, you can copy Ctrl-C, Ctrl-U and, and take it for your tasks. And this brings me now to the end and I give back to Andreas. Okay, thank you Andreas for this nice presentation. We are a little bit over the time, but I would like to show the website where you can find the recording and the provided model. Just a moment, I hand over the screen. So that's our website. I hope you can see it. Um, Bluebal.com and then under news and events you can find our webinars. We record all our webinars. Those are the next webinars. That's the webinar of the next week. New features in RFM6 presented by me. Then that's today's webinar. If I click on it and in the next days you will get an email with a link directly to to that page here and you will find the recording in the middle and if you scroll down you will find or you can already find the model that we presented today here. If you don't already use RFM6 then you can download our free trial version, yeah, both free full trial version, for example RFM6 and you can download it and use it for 90 days with all add-ons. Uh, yeah, also with the provided or showed add-on today. Yeah, and also other, uh, other add-ons are included. Just try it. 
Okay, that brings me to the end. Maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar where is a small survey. It takes you only one minute. You can score us. The worst score is one, the best score is five. You can enter uh, uh, yeah, a wish for future webinars or what we can improve or something like that. You can also leave it empty or enter a minus or what you want. Okay, uh, thanks again for your attention. Thanks to Andreas for this nice presentation. Thanks to Frank for answering the question together with me. Yeah, and bye-bye.